Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Beware all you influencers. You are about to lose all your sponsorships. Ah! How's that gonna happen? <laughs> oh, there's a plan for all the yields. Subscribe to my channel first and foremost before we get to the topic. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together for extra perks. Thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday. You are all welcome to join and partake in the chats. Hello, chat. Ah, welcome, everybody. Yes. Giving us Halloween vibes, Miss Influencer, right? Speaking of the Munsters, oh my god, Rob Zombie's doing the Munsters. Oh god, poor Munsters. Gonna be destroyed by Rob Zombie. But anyway, that's besides the, po the topic. How, listen, you guys, yeah, influencers, you might just start listening and hearing YouTubers start, you know, now, now you hear YouTube videos. How many times are we annoyed by when we start a YouTube video to watch it? And then within the first minute, this video has been sponsored by some freaky brand the Instagrammer or influencer would never really buy, but is acting like they love that because they're sponsored by them. And then, uh, and I, you know, television does it as well. And I would be fine if you just say like, hey, thank you for sponsoring my video today. This brand is sponsoring my video. You acknowledge, you move on. But then there's those videos where like they make like a five to six minute video within a video about the product they're trying to sell you. Cha, like I get it. It's nice to have sponsors. It's it's good income. But like, you got to learn how to kind of proportion wise do it so that it doesn't turn into a heavy burden for your viewers. Well, anyway, now it's become a burden. Yeah, people have been using it and abusing and milking that cow until there's not, no, no milk left, right? And so, listen, uh, Forbes.com reports how, how data analytics is sponsoring a slow divorce between social media influencers and luxury brands. Dun, 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 right? So, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, just my opinion, not rooted in any reality, truth, or facts. Everything is alleged. Before 25... The word influencer probably had a different connotation than what it would have today. This is a really, you know, I make jokes and I want to make it all fun, but this is a really interesting topic, you guys. Seriously, like, let's talk about this. Um, now, over the last decade and a half, social media content creators have become a center of focus, often attracting much more attention than traditional celebrities. Ish, kind of. Uh, over the years, influencer marketing has risen to become one of the most effective marketing and awareness creation forms. Of all the industries that utilize influencer marketing, the fashion and luxury industry has probably been one of the greatest benefactors. Influencers have also made most of their income from working with luxury brands. For the most part, this has been a marriage of convenience. By marriage of convenience, meaning, as I said, for the influencer that would never buy certain brands promotes them, you know, accepts the sponsorship because it brings the money. The sponsor says, yeah, we want to work with you because you have a good reach. A lot of people watch your videos. So let's, you know, so it's convenient. They don't love each other. It's convenience. Influencers with sizable active fellowship, uh, followership can make a substantial full-time income from their social media activities and marketing partnerships with luxury brands. However, here gets interesting. That doesn't seem to be enough these days, as more and more influencers and micro-celebrities. Who's a micro-celebrity? Mighty Mouse? He's micro. Are opting to start small businesses on the side, which often preclude them from marketing any brands in the same industry. So, you start your own lip lipstick company, you're not gonna... And you're an MUA? makeup artist you're not gonna you know other brands are not gonna want to sponsor on your channel if you're just promoting your own brand right makes sense right so recently youtube and instagram influencers uh name of them which i'm not gonna mention uh start, started a 
a nail salon somewhere. And um, th this couple leveraged their massive online followership to build a physical business that has already begun thriving in just a month. Then there's another example of another a beauty influencer who also recently launched their own brand, a brand whose unique eyebrow brow, uh, care products have since taken off and been endorsed by some noticeable names. So it's like the influencer now gets endorsed by celebrities. Now we're back to the celebrities again. So the overwhelming sentiment is that leveraging their brand to build a business is the logical next career step for most of these influencers. I mean, I agree. Why would you have to be always worried for every video, for every time you produce content? Oh, am I going to get a sponsor? Is there going to be enough money? Uh, you know, if, if you have a big enough following and you're famous for like, let's say talking, you know, makeup, make your own makeup brand. We've seen a lot of influencers do it. We've seen a lot of them start their own companies and it worked for them. Uh, with fashion, it's a little bit more difficult because it's it's really a tough, tough, tough world to to make your way through with fashion and, and really with good quality fashion. I, I don't know if it's even possible nowadays without having millions and millions of dollars of investors coming in, you know, pouring in the money to help you start. But but if you're doing makeup or maybe even perfume, uh, it's also difficult to do good quality perfume. Marketing for perfume is super hard. But anyway, if you have a good investor, good idea, good following, you go for it and, and you start your own company, it's more secure the income flow better than kind of hoping that for every video you make, you get another sponsorship, right? So the overwhelming sentiment is that leveraging their brand to build a business is the logical next career step for most of the influencers. However, when you consider that many became content creators to avoid the has, oh, sorry, what do I want to do? All right. All right. Yeah. So the overwhelming sentiment is that leveraging their brand to build a business is the logical next career step for most influencers. However, when you consider that many became content creators to avoid the hassle of running a full-time business, this sentiment begins to ring hollow. And I, I completely see this because like, I can tell you what I can like speak for myself. And, um, I, I've always loved, loved being creative. I mean, I'm an artist. I also studied art. I also then went into fashion and then I went into marketing, PR, uh, sales. I mean, I've been in all facets of, of fashion and uh, it, it became, you know, I went into corporate and I wanted to run away from all of that. I wanted to go back to art and I wanted to be creative, but I wanted to implement fashion into my creativity. And what better way to do so than making videos about things I love hence being creative about it, but then talking also about things I love, which is fashion, perfumes, art, pop culture, combining the two and working really, really hard and being very disciplined and making videos all the time, live streams all the time, allowed me to uh, quit the corporate job and be my own boss and be like, okay, I am free to do what I love and I enjoy it. But now the next step, if I were to start thinking, oh, okay, well, hold on. Okay, now this is a business. It's not pleasure, not a hobby. You know, then you start making business out of it. Like, okay, the products, you know, like what brand am I? And then, but then, you know, some people start creating products like, you know, makeup line or fashion line, fragrances, eyewear line, what have you. Uh, but for me, it's, I've always been kind of hesitant to accept sponsorships and I haven't yet. I'm not saying I won't in the future. I mean, if a good sponsorship comes my way and it's easy, simple, and it's a product that I, I wouldn't poop on, you know, it's a product like, oh, okay, well, this seems solid enough. I would do it. However, I wouldn't make everything depend on that because then you, A, you would lose your credibility at a certain point. You would become really annoying also because, I mean, you would be spending so much time every video doing like sponsors. sponsors. I mean, I watch, I mean, come on, how many of you have been you, you know the luxury YouTubers who we watch and then you turn it out like, oh, uh, Chanel Hall, Chanel Unboxing. And, oh, this, I got the unicorn bag. Play, click play. Okay, we have the AdSense ad playing. We know. We, we who have advertised, we have uh, AdSense activated channels. That has nothing to do with us. YouTube, you know, gets paid to play an ad in your video and they play the ad. Okay, so that you get a little bit of money from that. Fine. Then the video begins. 
Hi, welcome back to my channel. Oh my god, you guys, so excited. Today I'm going to be unboxing a Chanel bag. But first, let me tell you, these, uh, <laughs> these fake earrings that are like not diamonds, like they look so amazing. Um, I love them so much. <laughs> and this... <laughs> And the person is wearing like Chanel jewelry and all and like you see that they would never like I love it so much so I ordered this color out of that color. Oh my god, they're also available. Look how beautiful the packaging is. And then they show the packaging and the packaging is like literally shite. And you're like, what that? Where is the, where's the Chanel unboxing? <laughs> Look how beautiful the box is sustainable. I'm like, it literally looks like toilet paper. It literally looks like they wrapped it in toilet paper. But okay. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. You could just the color. Oh, and plus, if you use my code, you could get a sale, blah, blah, blah. And then that's over. And then you're like, oh, okay. Whew, finally, that's done. Is now the unboxing coming? And then the next, <laughs> they say, oh, but then while I was shopping, you know, I had to stop by this and I bought this and I bought that. And I'm like, and then another sponsored thing kind of slips in there as well in the same video. And then like towards the end of the video, finally you get the unboxing. And mm, it's tiresome. And these type of influencers lose credibility in my eyes. I don't know about you. Just talking about myself. So anyway, going on. So some experts believe that this is more of a significant of a signifier of weariness around influencer marketing among brands in the luxury and fashion space, resulting in them devoting less marketing dollars towards influencer campaigns. Hmm. This drop off may be responsible for influencers starting small businesses to augment their income. Customers want something different. This is what this analysis has actually come to. Um, the influencer marketing retinence that brands are facing is likely influenced by the perceived wariness of the customer base who seem to want less advertising in their social media content. You think? You think? <laughs> you think? <laughs> it's like, I'm in a loop because like, yeah, because at this point watching, you know, watching YouTube was a lot of fun. When did it stop being fun? It stopped being fun when... You know, it's already fine. Ad interruptions, you know, ad placements within the videos is one thing. But then on top of that, you're playing, you're, 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 you're reading out a script for sponsorships in the video. It's no more fun to watch YouTube, especially because a lot of these influencers don't really know how to balance it well. They're just, oh, great, great. I got four sponsorship deals. Let's stuff them all in one video so I get more money. Well, that greed, that greed is going to cost you long term your credibility and your viewers you might make a ton of money now but what are you going to do in the future when nobody else when nobody literally wants to come and watch you again because they know that of of a 20 minute video 15 minutes are going to be ads it's literally like buying vogue magazine yes we love vogue Mag magazine right but it's like of the 400 pages 390 pages are advertisements and 10 pages are content. And I'm like, YouTube was fun. It was born as something. And I'm, of course, they're talking here also about Instagram and all influencers. But I'm just talking about YouTube in particular because Instagram is a joke, quite frankly. I, Instagram is terrible. Um, and also, they're homophobes. Sorry, I just said it. My personal opinion. They keep deleting profiles of people who speak up about injustices. Instagram is terrible. It feeds into the bully culture, it supports the bullies, and it never supports the content creators. Instagram, you make me sick to the core. And Mark Zuckerberg, the name says it. The name says it. I'm moving on. Don't get me started, because I'm not going to rant. HRH Collections, it's gonna, she's going to look like a baby compared to how I can explode if you get me started on freaking Zuckerberg and it's fucking meta. Oh, did I say that word? I did. So... No more advert friend, advertiser friendly content for me. This video will probably not be advertised. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. Well, listen, let's try it out. Maybe it will. But anyway, shall I? Don't get me started. No, don't get me started. So, <laughs> so what was I saying? I hate Instagram. Right. Um, 
Social media, uh, what was I saying? This was advertising social media content. We don't want to see it. It's too much, too many advertisements. Social so YouTube began as a fun platform, as an alternative platform to television, to all of the uh, conformed, you know, consumer lifestyle. But now it's it's becoming just like television, really. But in bad quality because there's really no good standard. And it's really, really sad. So it's not fun anymore. It's really hard to find content that is really fun. Now, between the ads that social media platforms run and the influencer campaigns that brands leverage, the average social media user has become disillusioned and less likely to patronize these brands. Obviously. Social media users often follow influencers that they love on the, on the, on the variety of platforms, and so they are more likely to patronize a patronize uh, the influencers personal businesses than any other uh, they endorse also true while this explains a significant part of the equation Berge Abajian, CEO of leading jewelry br brand something something explains that the lack of measurability and personalization has also taken the edge off influencer marketing for most luxury brands he said today's customers want a hyper-personalized customer experience and influencer marketing does not really deliver in that regard. It is really difficult to gauge how successful influencer marketing campaigns are, which makes it more suitable as a brand awareness tool than as a lead generation tool. Now, I'm not so sure whether or not this is really fully true, and I'm saying this for one reason, because... I have a sneaky suspicion part of this article was also co-sponsored, allegedly, by this company that wants to sell us the concept of they know better how you should build your business and how you should promote with your business than just paying influencers to promote your business on, on, on their platforms. So it's a bit sketchy how this article is written. It makes me feel a little bit sus towards it. Um, but... They're saying that intent-based data is fast becoming the most influential tool that dictates how online retail brands sell and manage their customers. And influencer campaigns deliver little empirical data about the customer that can be leveraged for future marketing. It's kind of harder to get, dig into the numbers because if like you get paid to do a sponsorship in your video and all as a content creator, all you can give back to the brand is, well, look, my videos get this amount of views per video. Oh, let's throw in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin, Ethereum. Um, so <laughs> people, okay, I get, you know, 50,000 views per video. So the brand thinks, oh, exposure. Right, but the brand has no way of seeing if after that exposure of those 50,000 people, did they come to buy the product because they watched that video or did they come to buy the product because they, they watched something else? Because mind you, this whole pretense is that uh, when it comes to fashion and luxury in particular, these brands have been spending huge budgets on uh, social media influencers. And apparently less budgets on regular advertising, you know, newspapers and stuff like that. Because obviously if you pay to be advertised in a newspaper, you also don't know how many people really read the newspaper, how many people are going to buy your product after they saw it in the newspaper. Um, but a lot of trust apparently has been put into influencers. So you pay them a lot and then you're like, oh, wow, 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 this is amazing because all of their following is going to go and buy our products. And now they're realizing, oh, hold on, how do we know? So they're saying here a little bit later in the article, well, you know, you could give your influencer um, a coupon code that has that's unique just to them. So whenever somebody uses that coupon code to buy the product, you're going to know that they came from that influencer. Probably, not only, but probably. Um, so, this person said, like most other jewelry and fashion brands, uh, this person has leveraged influencer marketing over the years to good effect and is now pushing a more direct personalized, data-driven approach toward marketing. As evidenced uh, in the partnership that these people did with this other company, privately owned data company that helps brands hyper-personalize their online marketing through the use of their pro proprietary super-identity graph 
tracking over 1 trillion behaviors each day. This sounds so sus. That's why I don't want to even say the name of this company because it seems like they're advertising for this company and we're not going to let you do that. Not on my channel. Spe <laughs> Speaking with the founders of this sus company that analyzes allegedly 1 trillion behaviors each day. First of all, if a company comes to me and tells me, hey, I analyze 1 trillion behaviors every day, I'm going to be like, girl, there's the dough. There's the dough. Run, you got a minute before I call the nurse and I tell the nurse she's escaped again. Anyway. <laughs> so. Um, so this person said today's customers want to hyper-personalize customer experience. Oh, sorry, that one already. Now, speaking with the founders of, of said sus company, allegedly, they outlined their plans on partnering with this jewelry company uh, and how retail brands should be more focused on leveraging modern-day data solutions, like identity graphs, to hyper-personalize their marketing efforts and have more control over who they speak to rather than continually rely on influencers and sponsors. This person from this uh, jewelry brand has embarked on a radical digital adoption campaign and implemented a new data-driven direct-to-customer model that has significantly raised its revenue. I mean, hmm, sketchy. What to expect? Influencer marketing is often one of the most expensive means of marketing that luxury brands use. And when you consider the difficulties in gauging its success, continuing at these high rates seems unsustainable. Social media platforms like Instagram are impossible to ignore in any influencer marketing campaign because of their unique demographic and reach. Yet, Instagram doesn't allow clickable links in their post text. Oh, Mr. Zuckerberg, won't you fix that? This makes affiliate links a little challenging to utilize on the platform. Most followers exposed to a brand via an influencer's page still have to find the brand via Google. This makes it hard to trace the impact of the campaign. Brands have to utilize promo codes and other measures to track impact, but these elements only work for leads that reach the end of the marketing funnel. While influencers are starting personal brands, luxury brands are utilizing more data-driven marketing approaches. It appears that the cost of influencer marketing campaigns may drop significantly. And brands will likely utilize it more as an awareness tool than as a lead generation tool. The difference marketing-wise is if you use it as a lead generation tool, it means most of your efforts and money, your budget goes in that direction because you believe that that's the best way to, to promote your brand. However, uh, the awareness tool is kind of a side hustle, a side gig, and you pay less for it. So if influencers all of a sudden are declassified, dethroned from the top tier and are placed on that lower tier, uh, there's going to be some bitter, bitter crying on kitchen floors and we're all going to turn into chicken nuggets. Influencer marketing should always have significant value to luxury brands, especially newer brands seeking to break into the industry. Mm. However, this relationship is being redefined constantly. This marriage will likely end in a divorce. Luxury brands intend to maintain visitation rights. So it's like it's all over, but I mean, it could be maybe still okay in the future, but there's a recession a coming, allegedly. So economists say. With that recession, there's going to be trouble and problems. We're already seeing prices rising. Gas prices are rising. Food prices are rising. Travel costs are rising. Luxury doesn't seem to give a hoot toot. Hoot nanny. They just, oh, Phil will be fine. The 1% billionaires, they're going to buy our stuff. Well, are they though going to be that fine? Or is this just kind of like a tampon effect? Like, let's raise the prices now while we still can so that when we stop selling, 100% of the product, but we only end up selling 10%, that 10% is still going to make us survive because the amount that those 10% product cost in surplus, the amount of extra money we would earn is going to keep us above water. Maybe that's their end goal, just to survive a crisis, a, this pending doom. So maybe we got to revisit the whole concept of Chanel wanting to, oh, we want to want our bags to cost just like a Birkin and a Cali. Okay. Maybe Chanel is just saying, oof, 
we're in deep, you know, poop. And so we really need to figure this out, you guys. We have to like, yeah, problems are coming. So let's like up the price as much as we can now so that when the real trouble, when the real shit hits the fan, we got a little bit of puffer, a little bit of time to kind of try to sail through, you know, uh, these misty waters until situation gets better again. This is a possibility. This is a possibility. Um, Alex says, meh. Bernard, no, is still going to be rich. Unbox Beauty says, if a company does that in Europe, they will incur a major fines with the GDPR. Uh, Tipa says, people who use influencer codes are now being told to sign up for newsletters uh, to giving your email address, which is then sold to third parties for more marketing. Oh my gosh, it never ends, does it? It never ends. Kev says, it sounds like a paid ad, but we've seen through it, but we still analyze the bits that were interesting to us. You know, Unbox Beauty says, yeah, with Safari blocking cookies for advertising automatically, iOS app, transparency tracking, and Google following Apple's footsteps. Tipa says, many influencers are taking each other's channels down as they are now competing for the same brand sales and wanting their codes being used instead of the other influencer codes. Oh, yeah. Cheska C, living one Black Mirror episode every day. So true. But Tipa, that's a good point. This is, and also we've seen a lot of these channels, Instagram accounts being taken down like, uh, Saki Saki's Instagram account, she had like, what, 50K, all of a sudden gone. Uh, and, you know, like, why? She's like, literally, I mean, it, it's insane. But it happens. Uh, two of my Instagram profiles were taken down. Um, also for no reason. No legit reason. Super sus reasons, yes. But not because I was at fault. It's because some shady workings were happening on Instagram's end or on whoever's end was the end that was uh, flagging my my stuff, you know, or reporting it or just saying, like, oh, it's offensive, right? How dare a gay person be on Instagram? It's offensive. It's literally, wow, so mean girl, says Jenny. Terrible. I know. Petty, petty, petty little drama. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, you Ye, ye Instagrammers, ye influencers that shall lose the sponsorships. Cry in the comment section down below and subscribe. Never give up on love.